today we're going to etch a pat, uh, pattern on a silicon wafer using buffered oxide etch, which, even though it's diluted 7 to 1, can still be quite dangerous. Um, hydrofluoric acid can attack, it's attractive to things like calcium, which are in your bones, right? So rather than just rinse it off, if you get it on you, you rinse it off and use a special cream. But really the best way to deal with it is to not get it on you. So we're using our standard gear of a vinyl apron, a face mask, and I have a, a glove here. Um, what we've done already is measure the oxide thickness uh, on, a, on a dummy wafer. Today it was about 3,200 angstroms. We measured the etch rate and it took about five minutes. If you let your buffered oxide etch stick around too long, it'll change, and the buffering agent will even crap out on you. So it's always best to use fresh. So using like a little bit um, for one etching session is a lot better than kind of having a big bucket and just using it over and over again. So we have post-baked our wafers, and so now they're ready for etch. It's a five minute process, so as soon as I stick it in, um, you know, press pause. As opposed to the blank wafer where you see sheeting when the HF is done, that won't happen. It'll stick to the photoresist. So you really just have to go for your five minutes and then verify to see what happened. Um, that is like a long etch, and so probably not post baking would not work, right? With the other one, it was only in there a minute. This one will be in there for five. Uh, so let's start. Go. All right. So it's always important to do it, you know, when you haven't done it, right, uh, in a while, which is what happens in 129 like a week or more might go by. You want to verify everything is working, especially that buffer HF. So I just put the wafers in. If that buffering agent had stopped working, sometimes what you might see is the photo resist still pattern completely lift off, or you'll see like it floating in there. It's not doing that, so it's working. But not only that, say always use fresh buffered HF, but there was a bottle in there, a gallon bottle, you know, with only about that much left. And so I am not going to use that for this. I might use it for just, you know, general cleaning. Because uh, as a graduate student, I've been using this bottle all semester long, and I noticed things like, lift I had no idea, right? The photoresist is lifting off, ruining all the experiments. Um, I think I had done a dummy. And then was, it all went away when I used the fresh bottle. So, word to the wise. It's better to, to verify that. Okay, you can pause. Oh. Okay, so we just etched for the five minutes. All the oxide should be gone. Again, uh, the etch rate might be different because we're measuring, uh, we're etching Holes. Now, previously we were set up to measure thick oxide, and so we were getting 25, 26, uh, 100 angstroms. Now, I put it inside one of the holes, and it's less than 100. Well, if it's 50 angstroms left, it'll really affect the diffusion. So it's that's not good enough to say that we're uh, all set, right? So. We need a different recipe, and yeah, that means we need to recalibrate it. So we just put the reference there, you know, anywhere. And remember, in order for this to work, to measure inside the smaller holes, we need to be on 10. So you just press calibrate, and it brings back the menu 
7 is thin oxide. 1 for 10. X. Scan new reference. Yeah, you better scan. Measure when ready. It's in the middle. So we just measure. Less than 20 is as good as it gets. And the thing is, is um, I don't know if they talk to you about standard cleaning one and standard cleaning two. Standard cleaning two actually gets rid of sodium and potassium and grows a 20 angstrom oxide on it. And so, really, that, that's so thin, it won't affect the diffusion, it won't affect the contacts. So really, um, that's, that's as good as it's going to get. The Filmetrics can't do it because you can't focus in, and it's a $40,000 piece to make it do so. Um, anyway, so why doesn't everybody Take a look, move it to something else as big as what you see, and then press measure, just to make sure. So that, because what if one end of the wafer is not done, okay? All right, so we measured less than 20 angstroms, and we're just going to remove the photo resist with acetone. You want the hot plates off, right? Definitely under the fume hood. Squirt it in there. Right? And um, it should come off. Now yeah, if you if you over post baked it, right, and sometimes when you use the reactive iron etcher it gets really hard. Right? So that one is probably fine. What I want to do just pull it out of the bucket and see that you can see that it's red right and then where's the other wafer so I'll just put that in the acetone now yeah this this thing isn't needed for acetone, but it was just easier not to take it off. Oh, that's broken off. I can even see the pattern underneath it a little bit. But there's even like a goober there. I don't know, maybe it needs more acetone. because you know the acetone dries and leaves like a film so now we need to get rid of the acetone okay 
by squirting it with propanol. just take a few more so I'm not quite sure what the film is from so I'll start with acetone right and then getting the back because what if some of it stayed on the back and then came over onto the front this to do this well I we're still working on process. Right. You might even need to put it in uh, SC2, SC1 and SC2.
good.